today's message title is Soldiers of Christ, Numbers 1, 1 to 4. So from today, we're going to be looking at the book of Numbers. Why is it called the book of Numbers? Because we see a lot of numbers. Uh, they, they counted the people who were able to fight in the battle, in the war. Uh, let me read uh, the introduction. The book of Numbers tells us of the 38-year wandering of Israel on, in the desert, in the wilderness, following the establishment of the covenant of Mount Sinai. So last Sunday I talked about the covenant of Mount Sinai, or the Sinaitic covenant. And uh, that's how the Leviticus ends. The last verse of Leviticus says, and this is what the Lord uh, said at the Mount of Sinai for the Israelites. That's how the book of Leviticus ends. So from here on, from the book of Numbers, uh, we see Israel traveling from Mount Sinai to, uh, to Moab. Uh, right before they enter the land of Canaan. Uh, and uh, during that time, uh, a 38-year period, so during this period, God commands twice uh, for Israel, Israel, Israel to uh, count the numbers, uh, number of people who are able to fight. Why did God command Moses to take a census? You know what a census is, right? It's counting people. And God actually commands Moses to count the people, to take a census. Twice, he tells them. Why? To form a military roster. I know that some of you are thinking about going to the military. Uh... Some of the basic things in the military is uh, your profile. Uh, military has a profile of every soldier, and the military knows how many soldiers they are. Right? That's uh, some of the very basic things in the military. And I was in the military for uh, about uh, two years and four months. And um, they had my profile, right? And uh, uh, each platoon, uh, each company, uh, and so on, uh, there was that numbers. So uh, 20 people in this platoon and 100 people in this company, Right? They had the specific numbers. And that's very important for uh, the military to function. So that's the reason why God commanded Moses to take a census, to form a, a military roster. But this also gave Israel an identity as the Lord's army. Even in Exodus 14, 19, this was when Israel was escaping Egypt. This was when, uh, after the Passover, right after the uh, night of the Passover, Israel were going out of Egypt, and, and uh, uh, they were uh, going towards the Red Sea, and already here, God tells, well, God calls the people of Israel as the Lord's army. Uh, God, so from the beginning, God saw His people as what? As an army. And that's what we are. We are army. Uh, there, there is a denomination called Salvation Army. And I think that's very biblical. I don't agree with them uh, with everything. Uh, they, are, they are going towards universalism. Whatever that means. <laughs> Universalism means that uh, even if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you can still be saved. That's universalism, right? Uh, so I don't agree with that at least. Uh, but, you know, the word itself, Salvation Army, that, that uh, 
word itself is biblical because God had called us as an army, an army of the Lord. Uh, third, why did God command Moses to take a census? To give Israel a sense of purpose. Uh, why do we need army to fight battles and wars? Uh, why do Israelites have to fight battles and wars? So that they may conquer the land of Canaan. Likewise, we have a purpose. We should have this sense of purpose. We are here to conquer the world for God, for Jesus Christ. And we do that not by not by <laughs> stabbing people. <laughs> uh, but we do that uh, through uh, the word of God. And we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are here to fight spiritual battle. Spiritual uh, battles, I should say. So don't forget who you are. You are a soldier. Apostle Paul says that uh, we are soldiers of Christ. When I was in the army, uh, there were a lot of things that, that, that were uncomfortable. Uh, for example, I had to wake up 3.30 in the morning. Because I had to go to the post office, we call the APO, Army Postal Office. We had to uh, go to the APO by 4 in the morning. So that people, when the post office opens, people can come and pick up their uh, whatever, right? Whether it's letters or... Uh, so that was very uncomfortable. And when there, when there was a lot of workload, like in Christmas, uh, we had to work over 12 hours. So we started working at 4 in the morning, and uh, it's 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., not 6 a.m., but 6 p.m., and we are still working, right? And we were grumbling, we we're grumbling, and we're not soldiers, we're laborers. You know, I, I hate this place. <laughs> we're saying that all the time. But, you know, if, if you leave your post, then you're in big trouble. We call that AWOL. I forgot what that stood for. Absence without leaving. Wow, I remember. <laughs> I'm a genius. No, I'm not. <laughs> we call that AWOL. So that's soldier's life, right? You know, we, we have seen too many uh, TV shows and movies, right? And we think that it's great to be a soldier, right? It's all cool. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you got to do a lot of things that you don't like. And you got to put up with a lot of different things. Like your commanding officer, you know, tells you what to do, right? And you got to do it. One time, uh, there was a, a lot of uh, stuff, right? Chairs and desks and things like that. And uh, they, uh, we had to put them inside a trailer, and they won't fit. And so there was this, uh, I forgot, maybe he was a, a sergeant. I forgot his name. Uh, but we told him that they don't fit. And you know what he said? You know what he told us? Make them fit. <laughs> that's the army way that's the life of a soldier right when things don't fit inside you make them fit doesn't matter how you do it you can you can break the chairs or desks but that's, that's, but you know when you know when there's a battle going on right and you can't you gotta you gotta do things that you don't like right sometimes you may you have to make things fit when they don't even fit in, right? Uh, you know, I, I would love to have our own church building. Wouldn't it be so comfortable, right? I, I like to be comfortable. Uh, we worship here at, uh, at a school. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to worship at NPR, multi-purpose room. It's even more uncomfortable when we have to worship at here, you know, uh, at the pit here in the library. You know what? This is something that that we just have to put up with, right? It's 
when I go through tough times, I think about uh, my military days. This is nothing compared to what I went through in the army. This is nothing, right? But, uh, you know, we've been spoiled, right? We live in the number one country in the world. Uh, the, the best con- country in the whole world, right? And we've been spoiled, right? We have to have a car. And we have to have nice cars, right? <laughs> when there's something wrong with our cars, we get upset, right? When we get bills, right? <laughs> Unex- those unexpected bills, we get upset. Uh, but whenever I went to uh, the mission field, like... Uh, those third world countries, no offense, but third world countries, right? I was able to appreciate my life here in the U.S. My children running, running around with no shoes, right? People drinking dirty water. Uh, most of the uh, children in the world are like that, right? Uh, they are still like that. Uh, so uh, don't forget who we are. We are soldiers of Christ. Uh, we are here not to live a luxurious life. It would be great. It would, it would be great if I could live a life of luxury. But we are not here to live that kind of life. We are here to fight battles, spiritual battles. And sometimes it's very uncomfortable, right? Right? This fighting uh, or battling uh, may be very uncomfortable, but uh, we got to do this for His kingdom and for God's glory. Not for ours, but for God. We have been called as soldiers of Christ. We are children of the promise. So we start from here, right? Uh, We may be having good days and bad days, right? Some days uh, we're winning. We we feel like we're winning. Yay! (laughs) I have crushed my enemies. Feels so good. Some days uh, we we feel like we're losing. Ah, I made that mistake again, right? I failed again. I hate myself. (laughs) You are still a child of God. Children of God. So we start from that assurance and we fight we say this all the time don't we we fight from victory not for victory Christ said it is done it is finished on the cross Uh, he finished it already Uh, so we we are here to claim our land for God our identity is soldiers of Christ some, some people's identity uh, is a prince or princess. <laughs> I'm a prince. I'm a princess. Uh, in a way, that's right. Because God is our king. And we are his children. So that makes us who? Prince, princes and princesses. Right? So in a way, that's right. <laughs> Uh, but if you're thinking about uh, uh, this, oh, since I'm a prince, you know, uh, I don't have to work, I don't have to study, and uh, I'm going to enjoy uh, all that good stuff in this world. Uh, you're, you're thinking it wrong. <laughs> uh, yes, you, may be a, you are a prince, you are a princess, but you are here to fight. You are here to fight. Uh, I lived in England uh, for three years, as most of you know, uh, and uh, they still have monarchy. You know what a monarchy is, right? They still have a king. Well, it's Queen Elizabeth II right now. You know what's interesting? Uh, Whenever there's a war against another country, princes, they go out and fight. When there was Falkland crisis, uh, that's what they call I mean, the British, they call that the Falkland crisis Uh, two of the princes Prince Charles and the other guy uh, they went out and they fought fought in the war 
so yes, we are princes. Yeah, we are prince and princesses. Uh, we still gotta fight this battle, right? Uh, our purpose is to extend the kingdom of God on earth. Uh, that's our purpose. So uh, maybe there's a purpose uh, for us. There is a purpose for us. If we are truly children of God, then uh, we have to live a purpose-driven life. I'm not promoting that book by Rick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's true. If we are children of God, then we have a purpose to be here. And our purpose is not to conquer the land of Canaan, because that's already, already been done by the Israelites. But we are here to conquer the land for God, so that we may extend the kingdom of God on earth. How should we live as soldiers of Christ? How should we live? You know, the life of a soldier is very different from a civilian. You know what a civilian is, right? Civilians are uh, civilians. I, I don't know how else to say. <laughs> Non-soldiers. People who are uh, not soldiers. They are civilians. And they live a very different life. The life of a soldier is very different. Uh, there's a lot of discipline involved, right? You can't just do whatever you want. You can't, you can't just say what, whatever you feel like saying. One time I was so mad, right? I was in the army and I was so mad I kicked, I kicked the door, right? And one officer saw me. Right, uh, I, I kicked the uh, APO, uh, Army Postal Office door, because I hated working there. <laughs> so one officer saw me, and he went to my NCOIC. NCOIC is non-commissioned officer in charge. I was Corporal Wynn. Uh, and that officer uh, told Corporal Wynn that uh, I had been a very, very bad boy. <laughs> no, no, uh, the officer told Corporal Wynn what I did, right? I kicked the APO door twice, right? <laughs> uh, but I was, you know what, you know what's funny? I was in the bathroom and I, I heard, I overheard the conversation by accident. It wasn't, I didn't do that by, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't intentional. It was an accident. I, I was, you know, in the bathroom uh, doing whatever. Uh, and I overheard the conversation, right? Uh, and the Corporal Wynn said, you know, uh, this, this soldier is a very good soldier. Uh, he does his work without complaining. Maybe he's having a bad day today, right? We, we've been having a lot of workload these days. But uh, I understand what you're saying, so I'm going to tell him uh, not to do that from now on, right? You know what? She never came to me and, and said that. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't know, maybe she came, but uh, you know, she, maybe she uh, told me in a very nice way, because you know, I, don't, I hard, hardly remember, right? Um, but you know, it's like in the w workplace, it's, it's the same, right? Sometimes you, you can make a mistake. You may be making a mistake, but you know, your manager will cover for you if you have been faithful daily, right? Maybe you made a few mistakes, uh, maybe you know, you're having a very bad day, but uh, they see you, uh, including your manager, they see you. And they'll cover for you if they know that you are a faithful employee. Uh, it's like that even in the army, even in the military. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, my point is, it's, it's different. Life of a soldier involves a lot of discipline and it's different from civilians. Uh, a lot of people want to be a soldier 
but I look at them and they, they, are, they are closer to a vigilante, a lone ranger, or a gangsta. <laughs> Soldiers are different, right? <laughs> They're different. <laughs> Uh, we must be strong in the grace that is in Christ. So uh, this is Apostle Paul telling uh, Timothy that he is a soldier of Christ. But before he tells that to Timothy, he says, you have to, you have to be strong in the grace that is in Christ. Uh, you know, my vision is to uh, have a discipleship training at our church, but I'm actually waiting. Uh, uh, I rely on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I'm 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 waiting because uh, uh, we're not ready. You got to be strong in the grace <coughs> that is in Jesus Christ. But once you're ready, then we could start doing that discipleship training. But I I, I actually hear a lot of complaining <laughs> with the littlest things. That means. We're not ready yet. <laughs> uh, you have, first, you have to be strong in the grace that is in Christ. We must participate in the sufferings of Christ. I hate this word suffering. I've been, I've been going through suffering all my life. right? As soon as I was born, uh, when I was born, I had... The umbilical cord around my neck, I almost died, right? I didn't cry as soon as I came out into this world. I didn't, I didn't say hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't even cry. Why? What was my problem? The problem was, there was this umbilical cord tied around my neck. I was almost hanged. <laughs> to death. Uh, I, I was almost choked to death. Now, all my life I went through suffering. I was hit by a baseball bat on my nose when I was six years old. Wow. Right? That, that explains why I still snore at night. <laughs> how do I know? Some people complain. <laughs> That's how I know. <laughs> when I go to conferences or retreats, right? Sometimes my roommates complain that somebody's been snoring, and I'm like, "Who is that guy who's snoring? Who is that guy?" That was me. <laughs> I've been suffering all my even now, you know. Um, I'm suffering uh, because of my health and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so that's why I hate this word, but uh, we must participate in the sufferings of Christ. It's from First uh, Peter four thirteen to 4, uh, fourteen, and also Second Timothy two, three. So we got to wake up to the reality, right? This place, in a way, is a living hell, right? I've seen billionaires filing for bankruptcy. I've seen people who married models who married Miss USA, you know, ending up in divorce, divorces, right? I, I, I'm seeing the most powerful person in the world uh, getting into trouble. I, I've seen presidents getting into deep trouble. Uh, the president, the former president of South Korea, she's in jail right now. We don't know how long she's going to stay there. Right? So, we, we better wake up to reality. This, this place is no heaven. Well, heaven is in us. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? This place is no utopia. It's not a paradise. It's a place we fight. You can rest when you die. Uh, I'm quoting from a fitness center ad. They, this is how they used to advertise. You can rest when you die. <laughs> uh, so when you are alive, you got to exercise. You got to work out. Right. Well, for us, we got to fight this spiritual battle. 
<laughs> Never forgetting that、uh, Christ had already won the fight. We must not please ourselves, but the one who called us. Who called us? Jesus Christ. So why not here to please ourselves? Sometimes I feel like going on a vacation. Oh, I need a vacation. Dealing with all kinds of different people. <laughs> Sometimes they call me. They want to talk to me for at least two hours. And what do they talk about? They talk about their troubles, as if I I don't have any kind of trouble. <laughs> I, I already got my trouble to troubles to worry about, and they they want to share their own trouble for. Two or three days. <laughs> I don't answer the. I don't answer the call. They they call again. They call until I answer. <laughs> There was this one lady from another state who who called us. It was nine forty in the evening, and we were getting ready to go to bed. She called us seven or eight times in a row until we answered. Oh, you know what? I don't think we answered at all, <laughs> right? So I'm like, sometimes I'm like, I need a vacation, but you know, I got work to do. I got, I got to do this.、Uh, well, so the vacation will have to wait.、Uh, sometimes I do go on a vacation. You know why? So that I, I can come back refreshed and fight and continue to fight this battle. Uh, so I'm not condemning people who you know take vacations. Right, <laughs> it's perfectly fine. But what is your purpose of taking your vacations? So that you can be refreshed and come back and con- continue to fight. Life is a battle anyway. Oh,、uh, isn't this too? You know, this is too much. You are asking us too much. You know what? Life is a battle anyway. There was a song, "Life is a Battle." Did I get it right?、Uh, it was back from the '80s, so that kind of shows how old I am. But <laughs> there was a, a song,、uh, a very popular song. It goes like this: "Life is a battlefield." Yeah, and it is. It is. Uh, it's a spiritual battlefield. Here's the conclusion: He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So you may be thinking now. You may be thinking,、oh, I don't think I could do this. I didn't know I was a soldier, right? Now I know, but I don't think I could do this. This is too much for me. Too much discipline. Too much work. Too much fight. I'm already fighting with my friend, <laughs> girlfriend, boyfriend. I'm already fighting with my parents, and now I gotta fight this spiritual battle too. <laughs> you know what? Who began? He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. So it's not you. In a way, it's not you who's doing the fighting. It's the one who called you. That's Jesus Christ. He's in you through the Holy Spirit. So we fight. With the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, only for the kingdom of God, not for our kingdom, not to establish, not to expand our kingdom, but to establish the kingdom of God on this earth. So we pray, as in the Lord's prayer, we pray, "Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven." Let me pray, Father God, thank you that you have called us as soldiers of Christ. Help us not to dodge this call, this calling,、uh, but、uh, help us to fight this good fight in the name of Jesus Christ、uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.